Right, so it's uh, 14.50, and uh, I'm just going to start the presentation. Um, wait. I lost my mouse. Yes, uh, so this is what we are going to do. Uh, we're going to have like housekeeping and about me for five minutes, actually less than five minutes. It's just like I usually have a five minute buffer. So if there is a lateness and so on and so forth, we still have time. But I'm going to have a housekeeping uh, descriptions, uh, explanation, and about me. Um, about housekeeping, uh, this talk will not related to any technical stuff, so no technical related information in this presentation. So if you are expecting to have uh, technical you know, stories or technical uh, way of doing things with your friends or with your team, this is not uh, the right moment or the not, not the right sessions. And also for the question and answers, uh, please keep the questions after the presentation. We will have a lot of time to do questions and answer. And also if you do want to ask questions, please use the microphone over there in the front. And as uh, for your information, uh, all of your uh, questions or all of your voice will be recorded for uh, letter use. So people in at home or the one that cannot come to DrupalCon can see it. And then your voice will be recorded, just FYI. That's the disclaimer. And then uh, if you want to ask questions, uh, please state your name, uh, your role, and what you want to do. Uh, maybe it's related to what you are and uh, what you are going to become or what you're willing to have uh, in the future. And also please remind me that I should re repeat the questions. Uh, I usually forget, so please remind me about that. Right, so back to the agenda, we'll, we, we're done uh, about the housekeeping. We'll talk about the different types of roles that I had and their evolutions. And then I'll, I will talk about the challenges and lessons learned and QA and discussions. So hopefully we can have a fruitful and really nice discussion afterward. Uh, originally, I applied for one hour sessions, but they told me that, can you do it in 30 minutes? And then I say, I take that challenge. So I'm probably going to, re I'm going to speak really fast and go to really, uh, no, I'm not going to explain every point, but if you have questions for each point, you can just ask me afterwards. Right. Housekeeping about me. All right, this is about me. Uh, my name is Aradino Rizal. And in Drupal, I'm called Neo Safiar, and that's my user ID is still five digit. So I created uh, my Drupal ID around 11, 11 and a half years ago. Uh, I started with Drupal 4.4, and before that, I was doing uh, web development and other stuff. So I started uh, doing development from 1997, that kind of stuff. And that's me uh, with the Drupal Kuba in, in Swedish. I don't know how do you call it. <laughs> Drupal doll in English. And I took it when I was working uh, in, the, in Stockholm. So my old colleague is in front. Really nice. They call themselves different name at the moment. Hopefully they don't change their name next to Polkon because every time I meet them, they have different name. And then I'm wearing a traditional Indonesian uh, clothes called batik. Uh, we have International Batik Day, and then this is I took it when we have that International Batik Day. I went to the office with these clothes, so pretty interesting. And oh yeah, uh, fun fact is the most favorite clothes. Uh, by, uh, so Nelson Mandela really liked this clothes. So you, you probably see Nelson Mandela using these batiks. And then there is a map over here. Uh, this is basically my life. Uh, I've been uh, working, uh, living, and studying in those places. Uh, so it's quite a while. Uh, and at the moment, I'm working for Lund University in Sweden. 
Okay, I don't see any people that speak Hindi, so there is no joke there. Because it means something else in Hindi, you have to. <laughs> okay, next. Uh, different types of roles and uh, I had, and then in their evolutions. Right. I cannot actually see this, so I have to go there. Yeah, uh, this is the role I had and uh, when I was a single fighter. So at first, at first I start as a cobbler. What is cobbler? Cobbler is basically you do things randomly. If you see shoes cobblers, basically they recycle existing shoes and then to patch another shoes. That's what you do as a shoes cobbler. When I was a website cobbler, I basically took down an existing website and then rewrite the stuff in it and then publish it as my own, basically. So that's how I learned web design, uh, by reverse engineering existing website in the internet with Notepad back then. And then after that, I became a hobbyist. Uh, the difference is that I do it more regularly as, a, as the things that you do after work, the things that you do after, uh, uh, after school, after universities. So I was working in oil and gas company, not related to any website, but I feel like I'm enjoying doing, uh, you know, solving uh, stuff, uh, solving challenges in uh, web development related. And then I had a purpose with my hobby, like, my purpose was be started when my friend asked me to do their website. And then, oh, uh, I think I can help them with this and that. And then, uh, again, after that, I get uh, a real client that pay me with exposure. You probably know this. Like, like, uh, I, give, uh, I think a lot of uh, people in graphic design know about this. Like, can you do me a logo, uh, but I cannot pay you, but you get uh, exposure because I show your log logo uh, everywhere and other stuff. But it was fun because uh, I had something to uh, show people. And this is the reason why I'm, I'm, real, uh, I'm making website because as soon as you finish your stuff, suddenly, in like an instant, everyone in the world can access your uh, creation. It's not the same in biopharmaceutical company, right? You need to have like tests, that kind of stuff. And this is the reason why I choose web development, not the desktop programming or other type of programming. And then I became an amateur developer uh, that doing it part-time because I'm, I still had uh, my work. And then I do the development as a freelancer on weekends. And then, uh, I've become a professional developer. It means that, well, this has happened when I was in Sweden. I did uh, professionally, means that that was the only source of income that I had. I was studying and then I was doing website on the side. And then I was, a big, and then I became a professional developer, developer in company. So the difference here uh, is that when you are doing it yourself uh, and then the, the client is yourself. You don't have to think about it a lot, right? I mean, your, the client is yourself, so you have like a big picture of what the end product will look like, and then you're basically doing that. But then if you work with other people, like the client is other person, you need to have some kind of a first uh, communications and then some kind of a expectation management. Expectation management is that what you expect and your client expect supposed to be the same thing. Otherwise, they will have like, I thought that you can do this while you don't have this, that kind of stuff. And then it will bite you in the end. And then uh, if it's your friends, then the cost will be your friendship. If, uh, if it's uh, freelance, if it's pre freelancer, then the cost will be your pet uh, testimonial in your uh, it used to be like freelancer.com. Right now we have other uh, websites that do that. And then if it's in company that, then it will cost your job. 
But the point is that you have to think about if you do it yourself, you don't need to care about other people. If you work with someone, you have to care about their opinion. So you don't, you cannot push your opinion. You have to think about what the other people think about the end result of your product. Uh, next is a team player. Uh, I was in a dev of two, development team of two people, and I was in a development in a team of five uh, people in uh, with, with uh, agile workflow. And I was in a dev team where the front end is another company and we are doing the back end, and the UX is another company. And I was a uh, lead developer, uh, team builder, project manager, solution, uh, solution architect, and product developer as well. So I will tell you the difference between these two. In the dev of a, a team of two, so before that, the big uh, mindset change between the single factor and the team player is that you have to think about the first, the scope of your work, I mean, it used to be like you do everything, and then if you work with the team, you have to stick with your scope. Even though you can do front end, you can do system administrator, but if your role is a back end developer, don't mess with other people. It's like, do you know the backseat driver things, right? You are driving, and you don't want to be the backseat driver for that person, because you will create a unnecessary debate and unnecessary discussion that will uh, prolong the uh, the project, and that that may cost a lot of money because of that. And also, uh, the difference between a team of two and a team of five is that you just need to have more time to plan. And then, the more you go down, the more time you spend on planning rather than on development of things. So right now, 80% of the work will be planning, not actually developing the codes. Uh, when you work a lot, you don't need that much of planning because, you know, especially if you work for yourself, the client is yourself, you don't have that enough uh, expectation and you don't need to build your reputation around it, right? And yes, and if you are a part of a team, development team in a company, then you work with other company, then you have to have this kind of a shared jargon or shared, shared lingo. Because one company may think one word means something and the other company means something else. That kind of uh, shared lingo needs to be addressed or it needs to be discussed in the beginning of the project. It's part of the communication skill that you need to, when, you, when I see, when, when we say features, is it the features model or is it the features for the website? For instance, something like that. We have to have like that description when you work with other people as well. Otherwise, there will be confusion. There is a story with the ISS, International Space Station. Uh, some Lockheed Martin uh, engineers built the module with imperial uh, measurements, not metrics. So it doesn't fit, even though it uh, says, this is five and this is five, but the other guy five meters, the other guy is five feet. So it doesn't match. That's kind of like, uh, even though uh, they are uh, our technical engineers, they still have that uh, problem as well. And then when you move to uh, lead developer or when you are actually leading something, most of your time will be spent on actually taking care of other developers, not actually doing the work. The work is done by the specialist. As a leader, you work is taking care of the other developer, which is make sure that the other developer has whatever they need. Like, do you have a good connection or do you have a good environment? They can also, so the specialist can work as uh, efficient as possible. And our, I had the privilege helping uh, Lund University uh, to build a team. So you have to think about uh, what is the workflow between the developer and 
I help as well with the infrastructure. I help as well with the, this is the, I'll say, the knowledge that you have to have first before you do a Drupal development, something like that. Then in, in this uh, position, uh, you have to think about, not about one week, but like one year from now, what happened in one year. Like, is your solution or is your uh, prioritations match, what we, match with what will happen in the next uh, year or next two years? So for instance, if you are uh, help to build a team that doing Drupal 7 and you know in, like, in the next two years there will be Drupal 8, you have to make sure that the developer in that team knows about object-oriented. Or if they don't know about object-oriented, then you have to set a plan to educate them. And educating uh, people takes a lot of time, so you have to plan that outside of the real world. So maybe you set like, I don't know, Friday workshop where you do that and something kind of uh, uh, education uh, seminar every month, for, for instance. And also, uh, if you are in the head of a project manager, uh, you don't do the code. You basically just plan. It's about planning, and your role is about planning things, planning the resources, uh, the human resource, the infrastructure, the, the other resources. So you have to make sure that that's your priorities. And as a solution architect, you have to know the goal of the project. That's, that's the things. I mean, if the goal is to make your site faster, if the goal is to reduce cost of the existing solution, or the goal is other things. And then you have to create the uh, the solution that match the goal. And the important part here is, again, expectation management and then communication with the end user or the clients. What do, what do, what do they need like, for uh, the project to, uh, to be finished? Maybe you can split the project into two phases, like phase one or phase two. Or maybe you can split the project into phase one, phase two, or phase three. The, the point is, if you have the client expectation match with your expectation, that will be easier to communicate. And then it will be easier to uh, ask for resources, for instance. Right? And if, a, if you are a product developer, you have to match your uh, Uh, you have to match your expectation with what the company is about. I mean, what is the company things it will have in the future? Like, what is the vision of the company that the product is supposed to have and then fulfill that vision? And again, the, the, different, the big difference between the single players and then the team player is the communications, uh, expectation management, and if you are from different culture, uh, you need to s understand uh, the client's culture first. How do you talk with each other? Like if you have, if you are a European company and you have a Chinese com uh, client, you, you guys have different way of this uh, communicating things. And then, I don't know, like maybe the Italian company work with the German company. I mean, they have different view of time, basically, right? And the Italian and the Spanish probably a bit more lenient on uh, time, and the German is really strict on time. And then if you say, like, five days, you want to finish in five days, if the German think about it, but the Spanish probably, like, oh, five days-ish, plus, min plus minus one or two, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> oh, sorry. Somebody has that experience, probably. <laughs> Uh, that's including as well, uh, because like if you have a plan, a timeline that these resources or this port or this firewall needs to be accessed tomorrow, and then you work with some other people that, yeah, maybe plus minus, and then, you know, uh, what I understand as well, if you work with a Swedish company, you have to take a 
to think about the June and July because that's a holiday in Sweden. So a lot of people actually try to avoid that month if you want to send stuff to, uh, to Sweden. You will send it on August or before June, otherwise you will not match with your expectation. Again, again, uh, I, uh, the emphasis is understanding your client, understanding your peers, do a lot of communication, make sure you have the same definition on something, and then uh, understand uh, the culture. It, if you understand the culture, you can have two uh, choices, uh, com comply with the cult their culture or basically make sure uh, they change to your culture. But in my view, it's better to, if you can be more adaptable and more flexible to the client's culture. And then you can have uh, uh, better communication and then it will give you better reputation, better testimonial, better uh, feedbacks. Right. And then the, this is the challenge then, and let's learn. Uh, the challenge is the scope of work. Like, again, uh, if you work alone and you work everything by yourself, you, the scope is the whole project. If you work with other people, you have to have clear definition of the role. I'm doing this, you're doing that. So there is no overlap. Because if there is no, because, because if there is an overlap, you're probably doing halfway in this part and they are doing halfway in that part and then after that, you have to have a discussion how you merge those things. That will take time. And a chance of mindset, yeah, a chance of mindset of uh, you don't care about everyone and now you have to care about everyone. Like you have to care about everyone else. Like in Drupal, if you look at the Drupal issues, a lot of the things is not about, uh, okay. If you have time, go to the Node 8. There is a famous Node 8. That's an issue that finished after eight years. So there is a lot of discussion about that. And it's, if you have a lot of people working on the same project, that's, and then you want to make everyone happy, happy, then you have to spend time on that. Then you have to put it in your uh, timeline. Uh, Again, uh, empathize. Uh, this is a challenge because if you are not grew up in a culture where you empathize a lot of uh, things, and then maybe you are lonely, or maybe you grew up by yourself in the high school and you don't have a lot of friends, uh, you don't have this concept, and then you have to learn this. But this can be learned because I was that guy. I didn't know how to empathize other people. Uh, I was thinking like I was the one that know everything, and then, well, my way or uh, my way or there is no other way. And then you have to understand other people, and emphasize start with listening. And listening is not the same as hearing. You can hear words, but you're probably not listening to them. Listening have uh, more than just hearing and putting the words inside your uh, uh, ears. You have to understand them, you have to know what they mean. They, if they mean A, does it mean uh, A, B, C, or is there, a, is there other uh, background that makes them say A? You, you have to know that. Uh, and then uh, it is related to cultures. Uh, Specifically because I'm coming from uh, the East culture, Indonesian, Southeast Asia, and then I'm working in Europe. And the work ethics, the communication style, and the formalities are not the same. So the work ethics in certain countries in Indonesia is not that hard, but in Western countries is pretty, uh, there are some people are workaholic there. And then in Indonesia also, our work ethics is after 6 p.m., a lot of people are still working. In Japan, they finish at work at 10. And in Germany, when I was working in Germany, they sat down the computer after 5. They kicked me out of the office 
4:45. And then because of that, I learned that I cannot work more after five. Then I have to reprioritize my work. So you have to understand if you are just came from uh, Asia and then you work in Europe, you have to think about what the other uh, people expectation of you. In uh, in Asia is 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 not suggested. Uh, people are uh, over over time teams uh, over time is common in Asia, but not in in Europe as far as as far I know. And the communication style and the formalities is also uh, important. Uh, if you have if you are from Europe and you're not uh, familiar with formalities that you call your boss or your call your client without uh, surname or without the sir or something like that and then you work with uh, Japanese uh, that may be and there will be unnecessary tension be between that because in Japanese culture, is formalities is really important. Then you have to think about the target culture as well. Right. And then the next one is uh, lesson learned. Uh, done is better than perfect. When you work alone, you want everything to be perfect. But if you are working with other people and then you have client, done is better than perfect. The reason because there is a money involved behind that and then you to get that money some organization need to go a certain length to get that funding for your project so and then uh, the organization also want to see the result of the money that they spend so they can justify to the taxpayer for instance or the larger organizations so then it's better than perfect. Uh, it's related to the prioritizations. 95% delivered is better than 100% is not delivered, right? And then after that, you can improve the 5% over time. Uh, and then you are not a superman, so you have to delegate some stuff. Uh, if you are a single factor, you think you know everything, uh, and then you can do everything. Uh, when you are working with other people, you have to delegate, like, I'm doing this, you're doing that, and I'm not going to touch that because that's your work, uh, and then we can do it, we can do everything parallelly. Yes, uh, you're, don't be a superman, be Avengers or, or Justice League, depending on what religion you are. Uh, means that uh, Avengers and Justice League has they have different skill, but they have the same goal. This is what we are supposed to be as a team, right? And the member of Avengers or Justice League can change over time, but the name is the same and the goal is the same. That's what a team or a group is supposed to be like. An organization or company is basically just a group of people, right? And again, listening is not the same as hearing. Uh, this is goes vice versa for the people that saying the uh, saying the things and then listening to the things, because if you just hear the word like, and the, yeah, I'm hearing the word, but you don't actually act upon uh, the the words that you hear, then the one saying it will not say it to, say it again to you, and then you as a project manager, for instance, oh, this developer is really nice. Uh, I think the problem is gone because he never tell me any complaints again. Maybe because the project manager never listens and then the developer doesn't want to uh, tell the, the project manager again. And uh, there is two more stuff. Assumption is your worst enemy. Do not assume. Uh, just confirm that what you hear is uh, actually what they meant. Uh, do not assume if you don't and you don't know, uh, just pretend that you don't know anything and then just ask questions. Because when you ask questions, you may learn something new. If you just talk, then you're just repeating yourself, right? You don't, probably not. Uh. Yeah, and then what you need or what they want is, uh, what you want or what they need is probably not what you need or what they need. 
uh, use that as a basis. So maybe you want the new cool stuff, but, but probably that's what, not what you need at the moment. Use the data. Like, do we need uh, Facebook M or Google M? Something like that. Well, because it's new stuff. But then when you look at it from the data, uh, if you implement that, probably there is no use. So we probably don't budget for that uh, features to be implemented at the moment. Right. And then uh, this is, uh, we have uh, both sessions on 28th of September about sharing configuration in multi-sat environment in Drupal 8. Uh, please come and then share your thoughts about it. We will have, uh, we will show our experiments with features and configuration management in Drupal 8. And there will be other people that will share their setup as well. All right, and then join us for contribution sprint. Uh, if you have not been in the sprint, you can go to the first time sprint sprinter workshop, and in the end of the session, they usually have uh, live core commits. Uh, maybe there is uh, interesting stuff because last time there was a baby that do a core commit. They put, they take the baby on stage and they pre and let the baby press the enter button. It's pretty interesting. I don't know what they will have to do. Uh, next uh, screen. Right, so what did you think about it? Uh, you can send the survey there. And this is a question and discussion. I don't know how many time we have. I think we still have around eight minutes or so, or less, or is finished. <laughs> right, so uh, I don't think I, I, I don't think we have more time, but if you have questions, just uh, approach me after the sessions and then uh, we can talk more.